if I'm honest with myself, I handled it only okay. Warning, may talk about paramotor apostrophe S. Someone bought me this cup, but that's always really annoyed me. Why is it apostrophe S? Morning guys, welcome back to another video. It is a beautiful Saturday here. Looks like we've got a bunch of rain coming actually, but as you guys can see behind me, we've got the airplane taken apart, trying to chase an issue. Um, I had my first emergency in the cockpit the other day, actual real emergency, not a kid in the back having to go pee really bad or poo really bad that I had to land. So the other day we were flying, I actually had two people with me. I took somebody up for sort of a discovery flight. Someone reached out and said they were interested in flying. Um, and they asked if they could go up with me one time to see what it was like. And I said, yep, let's go flying. So we went up for a quick little flight. Then we flew over to Charleston, um, CHS, uh, to pick up my buddy who had, had his plane in my hangar. It's only like, I don't know, a five minute flight, maybe six from here to Charleston. So we probably flew around for about 15, 20 minutes prior to going to Charleston. Um, no issues at all. It was a nice standard flight, nothing special. Landed in Charleston, picked up my buddy. And um, after leaving Charleston, I start smelling something in the cockpit. And I'm thinking, well, oh, that really stinks. I'm like, and I'm trying to think if that's coming from outside the cockpit or inside the cockpit. My buddy who was with me, obviously he's a pilot. He was keeping his Mooney in here. Um, he was sitting right seat. And I turned to him, I said, hey, hey Lee, uh, is that, you smell that? He's like, oh yeah, I smell that. And I'm like, that's not coming from outside, is it? He's like, no. And I was like, oh boy. And it started to get really, really strong. Um, at this point, we're, I don't know, five minutes from Somerville. And it's, we don't see any smoke in the cockpit, but I can smell it very distinctly. And it's getting to the point where it is, it's burning my nose and my eyes. It's like an acidy smell almost. So I'm, we're flying, I'm like, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of hurting my throat. And um, I have obviously my buddy Lee and the, the guy that was just going up for a, his like, you know, discovery flight uh, in the back seat. And so, I immediately go into emergency mode. I think, okay, well, what do we gotta do? We don't have fire. I was like, but let's let's get prepared for it. So luckily had Lee pilot. I grabbed the emergency checklist, used all the resources available to me, which is another pilot, handed him the emergency checklist, said, hey Lee, go through that for me. I started shutting off unnecessary electronics, closing the vents. I opened the window. We were under 150 miles an hour, so you can open the window in the Mooney get a little more fresh air in and make sure I had the fresh air vents open. But even that I was considering, well, is the, the smells coming from the, under the engine, the fresh air inlets might be sucking in um, like smoke. Cause my fresh air inlet on the other side, you can see it, I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but it's on the side of the plane behind the engine. So all these things are going through my head. I already made my initial call cause I was 10 miles out from Somerville. So luckily we were already descending to our final destination. And there was another airplane coming in and I, I told him, hey, we need priority on that runway. We've got potential smoke in the cockpit. And he immediately said, okay, the runway's yours. And you know, we're, we're descending, but my, I was calm, but I was very nervous. Cause I was thinking, you know, if, if a fire breaks out right now, what am I gonna do? And that's all I was thinking was I can't get down fast enough. And there was no procedure to use in this situation. We were already in our descent to Somerville, which was our best place of landing. Underneath me was trees and you know houses and stuff like that. So um, there's really nowhere else to go. We're going to Somerville. So that, that decision was easy for me to make. What was going through my mind was, do I go to the runway with a headwind, which was runway six, or do I, the, the slightly faster runway would have been runway 24, but I've been landing with a tailwind. So I just barreled toward the airport at my fastest safe approach speed. And I kept that in the back of my head. I said, okay, look, I can go to 24 if I absolutely need to. And you know, if a fire breaks out, I'm just gonna put it down in the field next to the runway. That's what I was thinking. I was like, this is, this is an emergency. I didn't declare an emergency because um, there wasn't one yet, um, but it was, it was in my head. Anyway, very long story short, it's it's getting to the point in the cockpit, again, no smoke, but it's getting hard to breathe in there. Um, and it's just, it's burning our nose and our mouth and our eyes. So we land the plane and, um, you know, we open, open the doors and the windows, start shutting the rest of the stuff off that we had on and high speed taxi, we tell everyone, you know, hey, we're on the ground and we get over to the, uh, the ramp and I immediately, on the way to the ramp, I'm going through the exit procedure. I say, okay, Lee, when we stop, you're first, 
Uh, buddy in the back, I said, I'm gonna move the seat up. You're a second, I'm third out of the plane, which of course I already briefed this beforehand. I do an emergency briefing every single time. So um, what went through that while we were taxiing and at the whole time we were taxiing, I was prepared to just lock up the brakes on the runway or you know, wherever and jump out of the plane. So I'm telling people to do that, get ready with your seat belts, everything like that. And um, yeah, that's what happened. It was definitely coming from some avionics in the cockpit. And it was an interesting smell because it didn't smell like burning electronics. It didn't smell like burning wire insulation. It didn't smell like a burning PCA, that burning like silicone, like a, the, the circuit board burning smell. It didn't smell like that. It smelled like almost an acidy smell. Like it, that's the best, best way I've heard someone describe it. It's like acid, burning acid. So as you guys can see behind me, we got the airplane torn down and we think we have it figured out. We actually think it was the gear horn that just went bad. So the gear horn is an electric horn underneath, um, like in the avionics bay and in a Mooney, to get to the avionics bay, you just take off these two panels and you can get to all the avionics from outside the airplane. It's actually really convenient. And this plane, the micro switch on the throttle is not adjusted correctly. So when you're flying in the pattern at 15 inches of manifold pressure, which is where I like it in this plane, you get the gear horn going off all the time. And um, you know, the past, I don't know, how many weeks I've been training for my commercial. So the gear horn's been going off a lot. Really in an airplane, the gear horn should almost never go off um, unless you're doing an emergency descent, something like that. We, the gear horn is, is there so that when you pull your throttle all the way out and your gear is not down, it, it beeps at you to let you know, hey, your gear is not down. Um, in this plane, you've got three, three ways to confirm your gear is not down. One, you have a gear horn. Two, you have red and green lights to tell you if your gear is up or down and Three, you have a manual Johnson bar so you can see physically if the gear is down. There's no no question. And that's part of my gumps check. Gas, undercarriage, mixture, prop switches, seatbelts. Anyway, um, it's not supposed to go off that much. So it kind of makes sense that it, that it could be the gear horn. That's where the smell is the strongest after um, you know a few days of sitting here uh, with the plane air out. That's where the smell is the strongest. Um, and also that day that I was flying, the gear horn would have been going off because I would have had the throttle back in a descent, but I can't recall if we had been flying with, with, with the gear horn on prior to that, which is one of the problems with having that micro switch not adjusted is that uh, you get used to the sound. So it's that's makes it pointless to have a gear horn. That's the story. Like I said, um, if I'm honest with myself, I handled it only okay. Um, you, you, you plan for these scenarios, you go through your checklists, you go through your, um, you know, your pre-takeoff checklist, you know, what am I gonna do if I come back to my airspeed after checking my engine instruments, here's what I'm gonna do if I don't have airspeed. If we take it in the air, or if, if we have an issue in the air, we're gonna take it straight ahead to a thousand feet before we consider a turn back. You go through all these, these pre-takeoff checks, um, preparing for an emergency. I always tell myself my engine's gonna die on takeoff, and when it does, I'm gonna say there it is and push forward with no hesitation, find a place to land. So you go through all this stuff, but when it actually happens, it, uh, you're, I don't know how to say it, you're, you're not prepared for it, I would say, right? We don't, as GA pilots, we don't have like recurrent simulator training, anything like that. So when it finally happens, it's, you know, that's, that's your true test. I handled it, but there was things I could have done better. So looking back at it, I think that I could have shut more electronics off. Um, I have all my circuit breakers right there, nicely labeled. I could have started pulling unnecessary electronics. I shut off some of the main ones and lights and things like that, but I could have done better there. But the rest, I think I did okay. I was ready to go with the uh, the transponder if needed. I was ready to declare an emergency. I was ready to go to you know the necessary frequencies, which I really didn't need to do because I was at the airport. But and you know I hand I got the fire extinguisher out, pin pulled, ready to go. Gave that to the passengers. Said just hang on to this for us. Um, in case we end up needing it. So someone had fire extinguisher in their hand. So like I said, I handled it okay. Used the checklist, went through it, got priority at the airport that I was flying at, but uh, I definitely could have done better. So I'll say lucky learning experience, good learning experience, but got through this one and you know, everyone's okay. So I'm very, very happy, but that was the first real, real emergency in the cockpit and I'm very, very happy that it went the way it did. I'm gonna jump in here guys, get this airplane put back together and start testing it out. Well guys, just shut it down, but sat here for maybe, I don't know, five, 10 minutes with the engine running, get it, get it all hot. 
Um, I also have the avionics bay covers off. You can't see it, but that blew the air directly past the avionics into the cockpit, which I actually think helped because if there was a smell, it would have shoved it directly in. I felt the air hitting my feet, so um, I smell absolutely nothing. So I fingers crossed that's it. Now the next step is go down, uh, put the plane back together, take it down the runway a couple of times at full speed, get it really hot, up to operating temps, and um, dare I say the next step would be take it up in the sky, which uh, is looking nasty that way, but nice this way. So hopefully we get a quick test flight in. If I get that done today, that's a solid Saturday. All right guys, post-flight debrief, um, not post-flight, post-high-speed taxi debrief. Um, we've got a nasty storm. This is all rain right here coming in. Um, and it's only a couple miles from the airport, so I did not end up taking off, but did a nice long run up in the plane, did a high speed, full speed taxi down the runway. It's actually good practice because um, aborted takeoffs are not something you do frequently, and it's it's not hard to do, but um, it's, it's a good practice. Go down the runway, pull the throttle back, um, and simulate you having to stop for the end of the runway. Um, I actually pulled it back at the 1,000 foot marker, so I had 4,000 feet to stop, so uh, plenty of time, but got the engine up to high uh, temps, operating temps, and no smell in that cockpit at all. So fingers crossed, that is it. I would have liked to take it up in the air and just keep doing some pattern work and get it you know, really worked in to see if I can um, really test it. But uh, good test for today, airplanes put back together. I think, I think we nailed it with that gear horn. I think that's what it was. So um, solid day, I'm happy. I'm gonna go home and hang out with my kids the rest of the Saturday. Luckiest guy ever, man, I'm just, I'm in a really good mood. Even though I didn't get to fly, very, very happy, very, very fortunate. And I got nothing else. If you guys like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram if you want to, all that jazz. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.